rusty wheel and knew I'd take her home. I brought her to my farm in an Amish neighborhood where simple living's valued. She'd be loved and understood. I put her on a treadle stand and coaxed her wheel to turn. I felt her joy and easing with my study and concern. I cleaned her and I owed her, showed her off to all my friends, repaired the hurts of years of years, and let her sew again. So as far as cleaning the machine, I'm going to try to be somewhat delicate up here on this part up. And I just got started back here. I have some funky machine oil that's not the best quality that I am just going to be using to try to get all of this heavy duty black stuff off. You know, with the idea that oil removes oil. Um, is leaking all over. I might just put it on and let it sit for a little bit because there is a lot of stuff here and the same up here on the top. There's a whole lot of just built up grease almost so much that you don't even see the decal. This is a lot better right here. The only part on this whole upper part that is damaged is this little bit right there. I'm thinking they might have had some kind of a pin wrap or something at one point. But that's not bad. That's not bad. So, once I have it clean, or at least as clean as I'm going to get it using sewing machine oil, I'm going to come back and probably use some other products to try to clean it up more and polish it. But we'll see when we get to that stage. All right, I've tried a couple things. What's working the best, I think, is my Gojo hand cleaner, non-pumice version, with a little nylon brush. And that seems to be melting that grease, but still it's delicate enough that the decals aren't going to get damaged. So, yeah, I think that that is definitely going to be my preferred method. Gojo wire brush not wire brush, nylon brush, like a toothbrush, and a cloth. Okay, so, yeah, that's a huge improvement to what it was before. Happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and finish the upper part of the machine. Just polishing the little medallion with a little bit of polishing compound and a cloth wheel. And the front is pretty clean. Um, it's not, you know, it's finished polish, but it is close enough that I can get a pretty good idea of what it's going to look like. And I'm happy with that. You know, down here, that's a different story. Up here, plenty nice. So I'm going to finish cleaning up this medallion and then get started working on parts. My parts, when I clean them, you know, they're all nasty. It's pretty much the same process where you want some kind of something that's going to clean into grease. I use my hand cleaner, my Gojo type hand cleaner. You know, there's other brands. It's just what I use. It melts the grease and again with a brush or with a Dremel or with whatever, um, it's going to come clean pretty easily. And I also have a little desk um, polisher. It's, it's like a jeweler's type polisher. Let me tip the camera over there. See that over there in the corner? She's handy. She has a uh, what they call a fiber wheel on one side and a polishing wheel on the other side. You know, and that's good for, for doing bigger parts. The little Part. I have a little polisher that I put on my Dremel and use that. So um, I think that this is going to be a quick one for the take apart video. I just imagine that I have gone through and cleaned, get that wire brush away from my decals, that I have gone through and cleaned um, this machine. Now 
This is still nice and soupy inside here because I've coated it with a lot of penetrating oil. I need to get in there and, you know, do some cleaning, but I kind of want it to sit for a little bit. Same with this right here. I kind of want that to sit for a little bit before I go in there and clean. Okay? Um, so that is her. Next time I'm going to be... Uh, she will be clean, you know, this is still dirty here. She's going to be cleaned up, and then I'm going to work on my, my arch project for the bed here. If you can see, yeah, it's lovely, but it's not, it's not anywhere near great, you know. It's down below the silver here. So anyhow, that's it. Hope you liked her. I will look up her serial number and see how old she is and put that on the uh, title. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Hello and welcome back. I want to show you what I've been doing with decals here. I have a couple experiment sheets going on and I'm going to be playing with different options just to see how it's going to work. Okay, so what I have is a photograph of a center decal from a person who, who had one that was in really good shape. And I just put that, you know, in different sizes on different papers. Right now they look the same, but they will react totally different. This is a water slide decal paper with a clear backing. Now, it looks nice and bright and vibrant here because it has a white paper behind it. But if I put this on a black background, all the color will disappear. So, I just ran up the hill, I'm out of breath. <laughs> so if I use this, I'm going to have to use a process of layering um, either silver leaf or gold leaf behind it, okay? This is also a water slide decal, but it's white on the background. So basically what you see is what you get. And I could cut out just around here and put it on, and it'll look nice, but it won't have the shine of the metallic behind it, which is what I'm trying to match, okay? And then this is tattoo paper. And these go on differently. Um, the sticky part of tattoo paper is on the front, so you wet the front and layer it here and then pull off the backing paper. So the image gets reversed. So if you're gonna use this, make sure if it has words or something on it that you reverse the image, you know? Um, this is another one that I would be using with a gold leaf or silver leaf. And so I'm going to be playing with different options. I have a piece of uh, board that I have painted black and it's over there drying. Once it's dry, I'm going to do a sampling of the smaller decal of each of these in each process just to see how it works and see which one will work best because this is a total experiment for me. Once on my sample board, I come up with my best option. Then from there, we will go ahead and start working on the machine itself. At this point, my machine is pretty much clean up top. And you can kind of see what I'm talking about, how there's different metallicness. And they actually have silver around the headdress and gold out here and everything. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that with my images because my images are um, all gold tone. But you can see here, this is all worn out. So what my plan is, is I'm going to start out with a light sanding just to remove all of the decal work on this bottom plate. Okay? And I'm going to try, my goal right now is to try to, once I have all the decals removed and this is perfectly smooth, give just the bottom plate a one coat of my really good black paint, okay? I'm hoping just a single coat, it, it won't bubble. That's my hope at this point. And since I'm doing black on black, it doesn't have to be super thick, it just has to be consistent. And the decal that I'm gonna be using for the bottom plate, it's actually slightly larger than this one. It's probably gonna be about that wide. But you know, that's fine because I'm not gonna be putting anything here. You know, it's just gonna be a big center decal. So, with that, um, I'm gonna go ahead, take a step back, wait for my boards to 
get themselves dry because I don't want to mess with the decals on my little sample boards until they are 100% dry. And just start trying to remove these decals here. I want to show you what I've got here. Um, now, remember, I am going to be painting it, and I am going to be letting it rest between the time I clean it and I paint it. Um, but what I found is that where these decals are gets really, really gummy. And what I'm doing is I have just a tiny little bottle full of lacquer thinner. I'm putting a little drop this on there. Get a little wire brush and just rubbing it and that is pulling off the decals really easily however it is also making a very gooey mess you know so once i get that off then i can wipe it off let it dry and lightly sand it now i know there's going to be a lot of people that jump on here and you know have a nervous breakdown about all the solvent that i'm using you know we do our best if you have a project and you don't want to use this by all means please don't but this is the process I'm using right now um, next time you see this it's going to be completely just black on the base here and ready to paint Okay, it actually it didn't take very long so um, I am going to let this rest for a couple days just in case there's any gassing off that's happening because of the solvent that I use to clean with um, I have sanded it down with a couple different grits of sandpaper. You can see there are spots where you can see bare metal. Um, you know, that's just the nature of the beast, but my paint is going to cover that up. So, let me give it a few days to rest, and then we'll come back and mask off the entire top section so that all of this stays nice and protected and start painting the base. Okay, I wanted to show you where I am right now. Um, this bottom, I went ahead and sanded it down some more with a 240 sandpaper just to get it nice and evened. And then once I had it sanded, I came back and wiped it down. This is the stuff, but you delete it a whole, whole lot. This is the same brand as my um, Diamond Coat. I'm sure there's other cleaners, but it works well. So then I saturate my little cloth, wipe it off real well, and that gets all of the dust and everything off of it. So now I am going to give it a couple coats of the high performance enamel in black. And I have it taped off. I have the little serial number taped off. So I'm just going to be spraying this bottom, probably two coats, and then I'm just going to let it dry for a couple days. Okay, I got a couple good coats on there. So far it looks really good. Um, you can probably see where the light is hitting and it looks a little dimpled. That is just some little imperfections on the bed. You know, I sanded it down the best I can, but gloss paint will show up everything. But my hope is once the decal is on this center area, that's going to camouflage some of that. But it's still a whole lot better than it was. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a trial run on my test board of these different decal papers while this is drying. Okay, so what I have right now is a piece of wood, you know, it's wood, not metal, but I think it'll get the point across, um, that I have painted in that same black a while ago. So this wet looking area here is I put a little coat of metal leaf sizing on there. And because part of the testing that I'm going to do is to put silver leaf on behind my decal and see if I can get a good second rate silver leaf looking decal. Okay, so um, the one that is just on a white backing, a water slide decal with a white, paper, white backing paper, it's going to go over here. It does not need silver leaf because of the white opacity of the paper. Nothing's going to show through anyway. But for this, I need to wait until this has dried clear. Once it's dried clear, then I can put my little piece of silver leaf onto it. And then once I have that set, then I can put the tattoo paper and the clear backed water slide decal over this to see what it will look like. Okay, so while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and put the white backed decal on. Right here, just sliding that paper backing off, and you can see that you can still see the print area. Okay, hang on a second. Yes, I know. So, 
nice to dry that off. Now what I'm not liking is you can see the edges of that white kind of peeking through on the edge. So I think that if I did use this one, which does give a nice picture, okay, it does give a nice picture, I would have to come back and somehow touch up the entire outside edge because that white backing is kind of peeking out. So I'd have to use a tiny, tiny black paint or something. Haven't quite figured that out yet. Now, when I was about to do this one, I actually grabbed the clear back one by accident. So since I did that anyway, I'm gonna have to cut out a different one. I'm gonna show you. The reason is if, see how this one, you can still see it? I'm just gonna slide a little bit out. This is the clear backed water side decal. If I put it like this, can see the entire picture disappears, okay? So I'm gonna to try to pull that back onto the paper so that I can use it in just a few minutes, but I just wanted you to see that. So let me, this is almost dry, and for my purposes, you know, I'm not wanting it to last forever just on my test spot. So I'm gonna be putting my silver leaf on it in just a moment. I know it's not dry yet, but it's close enough for me. I'm just gonna set my silver leaf on top of it and pat it down. Uh, let me push this little piece off here. Pat this down with my brush. Looks like I have a couple little holes I'm gonna need to deal with. And I'll be much more gentle when I'm working on the actual machine. I just wanna get a, a picture of what's gonna happen here. Okay. So let me let this dry for just a bit. I'll dust off the little fragments, you know, but we have a good silver back that now I can put the other decals onto. Okay, so I have put my clear decal over that and let me see if I can turn on this other light here. I'm not sure if you can see, but it is brighter back there and I can see hints of the metallic behind it. So that's kind of cool. You can see that this, no metallic here, some metallic here. And the thing is, the original uh, decals on the machine that I am trying to match up to do have the metallic behind it. So this is the clear water slide decal. The last one I have is the one on tattoo paper. Now this one is inverted, so I put it down this way and peel it off so my little sphinx will be looking the opposite direction, which I don't really think matters. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this one wet. It goes down like this, and then I peel off the backing paper. Okay, I kind of made a mess out of my little tattoo paper one because I wasn't sure what it was. And this stuff, it, it doesn't feel like it has any adhesive on it, but the more it becomes wet, the more it almost turns into like, almost like a very lightweight, filmy gel, kind of like uh, gelatin sheets or something. So. I was touching it and playing with it too much and it broke, so that's why there's a little crack right there. But I think you can get the idea. For um, the purpose of this thing here, this little test, what I can say is the tattoo paper actually is the clearest as far as showing the um, metallic, the metallic silver backing on it. You know, and if I didn't bust it, I think that that would be the best. The clear backed water slide decal does show some of the metallic behind it, um, not as clearly as this. This is the clearest, but it's a lot more durable for putting on. So there's that. Then there's this one, which is basically like a sticker with no, with just a photo of a decal. So you don't get the true metallic nature of it, but you do get, you know, some nice facial features. Um, I think I might play with, I have one other tiny tattoo paper one. I might play with it and see if I can get better at positioning these without breaking them. And if I can, then I'm probably going to try to use this one this paper. Now the problem is going to be getting the uh, backing to only be behind the part that I cut out. So, because I don't want silver to be all over the base of the machine. So I'm going to work with a solution for that, but 
next step is to actually play with this other, the other one that I have that's this size of tattoo paper. I think I'll try to put it right here. See if I can get a better result. And if I can, then that's what I'll use. If I can't, I'll probably use this one. All right, I'm trying something different with this one. This is the tattoo paper, and I applied it onto a sheet, a free sheet of the silver leaf, okay? So that's still a little bit damp. I have also put my sizing, my uh, metal leaf adhesive size glue stuff on here. So this is my thought. Um, this is actually drying fairly quickly. I cut out around my decal with a pretty wide border. Okay, once I feel like this is fairly dry, I'm going to very carefully, if I can, come in here and trim off the extra. So just trim in here right along that edge, okay? So that should cut my decal now with that edge trimmed off so the excess silver is not sticking out. And this is so light. You wouldn't believe how light this is. It's extremely filmy light. Okay, so now I'm hoping that the silver leaf that's stuck on the back of here will stick to the silver leaf glue that I have on here. So I'm just going to try to carefully place it on and tapity tap. Um, It looks like it needs a little bit more glue. Yeah, it needs a little more glue because it's starting to peel up from the edges. So I'm gonna get my glue on a little bitty paintbrush and try to push it in around the edges and see what I can do to fix that. Morning. I wanted to show you what I've got here. After a whole lot of experimenting and trial and error, I decided that um, using the silver leaf or gold backed decals, it was just going to be too fragile. Okay, I tried different things and it just didn't feel stable enough, especially for something that's going to get as much friction, you know, in use as a bed of a sewing machine. So, as you can see, I have a very abstract sphinx looking bed here. And what it is, is this is part of one of the decals that I printed on just the white backed, um, the white backed water slide decal paper. And you can probably see a little bit of an edge of white. What I'm gonna come back today with a fine point black Sharpie and just color that, you know. I will be putting a clear coat over this, so it will be covered up. Now, previously I bought a full set of Sphinx decals from the Keeler Sales um, Singer decal seller. They, they do a great job, but that's what this is. These are from the Keeler Sales, and they're nice. They are um, gold ink, whereas these here are the silver backed, okay? So it's slightly different. Now I can tell you the Keeler Sales uh, Sphinx, the ones that I have don't look like this. They don't have um, all of the detail that these do. So I just came up with an abstract look because one, I was using miscellaneous smaller decals because I didn't have a full set available. And I just kind of wanted it to purposely look like this is something new, okay? This is something different. And I think just having an abstract shape, you know, but still incorporating some of the Memphis design is gonna be good. So that's what I have right now. Now before I can put this machine back together and I still have to clean up her parts. So they are over here looking very grungy. I will get to that. 
Um, I need to finish cleaning her up really well because I want to get all of the decals that are up here as clean as possible before I clear coat the entire machine because um, at that point I'm going to be clear coating over all of this. And I am just leaving this on here. I'm going to try to clean and polish it as much as possible, but I'm not taking it off. So, give me some time. I'm going to keep playing with her, cleaning her up. And then um, the next step is going to be to clear coat this machine um, once she is clean up to the level that I think she should be. All right, I got her pretty much cleaned up. And instead of using a marker, what I've done is decanted some of this paint into a little cup and I have an extremely small point brush and I'm just going to use that to touch up this edge you know where the white is showing I think that will blend a lot better okay so I've got it touched up I'm going to need to let this paint dry overnight before I clear coat it but I think that that works really well um, I'll show you in a second how I decant, in case you're ever curious, but I just remembered I still have to clean off this part. Um, I just wanted to take a quick look and make sure I'm not going to have to do any touch-up painting while I still have my wet paint in my little cup. And it looks like the paint is complete, it's just very filthy. So I'll be washing this and the wheel. Um, the paint on the wheel looks complete also, just, you know, again, extremely dirty. So I think that's going to be good for today. Um, when I come back next time, this paint, my touch-up paint, will be completely dry. I'll be able to give the top part of the machine a final buff. And then I will go ahead and put a clear coat all over the entire machine, which should protect the new decals I've put down here on the base and also these up here on the top part. So I will see you then. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started cleaning all of my little parts. And I'm just going to show you on one component here, but my methods are pretty much the same. I got some Gojo kind of hand cleaner here. And I coat everything with it really well because it's going to get a good start on melting the, the nasty grease, grime, everything. It kind of turns it into a sludgy gooey mess, you know, so this is a very messy, messy uh, process. But then I have my part, let's say this little block for the stitch length, okay? I clean it off, wipe it off to get the majority of the goo. And then I use a Dremel tool usually. Okay, there we go. So in addition to my Dremel, I've got my little polishing wheel. It's got on this side what they call a fiber wheel, you know, that's kind of like a really, really hard abrasive pad, but it's, it's good. Then on this side it has a, um, can you see over here? This side has a polisher wheel, a softer fabric wheel. So between my Dremel with either a Scotch-Brite pad like this or wire brushes, you know, I go ahead and start working things out. So on the lighter dirties, a scotch Brite usually works. Um, let me try it on this little bearing here so you can see. This is what it looks like right now, okay? And there's different uh, grit weights of these little guys. I'm actually using one of the heaviest ones right now which is good for removing gunk. The lighter weight ones are better for polishing. Okay, you can see, hopefully, that that takes a lot of the stuff off of it. And then once I get that off, then I wipe it down again. Okay, until I have it clean. I usually don't try to put it onto a high polish until just before I install it, because I may have to grab it with dirty fingers between now and then. So that's my process. Um, I'm going to use a wire brush on this. And be careful using wire brushes, because these little pieces, these little wires just fly everywhere. So I'm just going to lock that in so you can kind of see how nasty that is. OK, 
Okay, so then I wipe that off. You can see at least that part's a little bit cleaner. And it's probably going to take me a few different, you know, deals to do it. You can use dish soap to clean it. You can use, um, I have some, you know, good cleaners. You can use that to clean it. Honestly, some of this gunk is so locked on and old. This machine is um, from 1908. So we're going on about 120 years old that some of this grease is. So, you know, it, it took a while to get that nasty, so it stands to reason it's going to take a little bit of time to get it clean. But it is very possible, and it will come clean. So I've got a lot of parts to deal with here. I just do one little section at a time, clean everything in it, put them all back in their little baggie, and put it in my other box that is the already cleaned and finished box. So I'm going to do that for a while. You don't need to watch me do the whole thing. And I'll see you later. It's been a day, and I think I'm ready to go ahead and clear coat this. Now, I have cleaned up and buffed up as much as I can of the old up here. Um, now, this is my own machine, and so it's kind of my guinea pig. I would rather experiment on my own machine than someone else's. And so what I have done in order to get it as clean and shiny as I could is I have used uh, my rubbing compound, and I have used polish. And I don't know, and I buffed it off as best I can after that. I don't know how that will react to my clear coat. So that's the big um, experiment on this level. So you will find out as soon as I do. Um, but one thing I want to point out, if you are going to paint your base or anything, before you do a clear coat, after you've got your color, you really, really need to come in here. I'm just using a dental pick and clean out all the paint from that little sliding groove, okay? It's better to do it now. It actually would have been probably better to do it before this black paint set, but because it was only, you know, a very light coat down here, um, it's not that big of a deal. But if you have a whole bunch of heavy paint and you let it completely cure, when you go to actually clean it out to be able to slide your plates in, sometimes you can get a big... Uh, crack or a big chip come out and that's you know disaster so got that done and give it one more little wipe down to remove any dust and I'm gonna go ahead and clear coat it as is um, I'll probably you know stick something in here so paint doesn't get into that gearing but everything else is pretty much stripped out and I'm gonna use my same diamond coat can I will show that to you over at the table Okay, I've got it over here, and um, I don't think I mentioned, when you decant paint, the easiest way, if you ever want to, that I have found, is you get the little sprayer, it comes on a WD-40, with the little pipe, and then you can attach that on the other end to another sprayer, and then, sorry about that, set this one over a little plastic cup or something, and the paint goes straight in. Now, as soon as you're done, you have to clean these out, and I clean mine out with acetone. But so that way, you can just keep basically very, very cleanly and easily taking little bits of paint out of spray paint cans. So, got my machine over here. Um, let me get my clear coat. Okay, this is it. Diamond coat. I need to spend a couple minutes just shaking this up like crazy. And then I'm going to give it a coating. Probably wait about, you know, two minutes, not longer, and then give it another coating and call that good. Okay, she has pre two pretty good coats on her. And you can kind of see the difference in this decal and those decals. Now these are the painted um, Keeler Sales decals. And these are the original, you know. I would say the Keeler sails are as bright as the originals. They're just not metallic, you know, but they are metallic paint. They're just not uh, gold leaf type metallic, okay? And there's that one. So I think it's coming along pretty well. I'm going to leave this for a few days just to let the clear coat really set before I touch it. And then we'll see how everything does. So I think this is probably the last part of this video. Next time we're going to be putting her back together. Thanks for watching.